The best protection any woman can have is courage, said by one of the greatest female writers of the 19th century, Elizabeth Cady Stein. I attend FIT where women dominate the male population, so I believe in this quote. There is courage all around in this campus. Now to properly introduce myself, my name is Tiana Guerrero, and I will inform you on the life and times of Elizabeth Cady Stein. I will share with you on how she paved the road for women today, her impeccable knowledge and bravery she put forth back then in order to encourage women's civil rights today. According to nationalbiography.com, she was born November 12, 1815 in New York. <clears throat> she was a daughter to a lawyer and Quaker father. He is the one who triggered her desire to get an education and gave her access to his library. Now, 18th century, what part of town did she live in that her father gave her access to his library? Now, she was very privileged in that aspect because at this time, women were not encouraged to get an education, to own businesses, to own their own property. It usually was for the for the men and if she did have property she had to hand that over to her husband according to biographyonline.net her knowledge and gender bias that discriminated against women and black people started in that library she continues on to the best forms of schooling for women washington's academy and emma willard's toy female seminar her profession was her writings and her speeches she was the wingman to susan b anthony but she was the most politically intact. Susan B. Anthony did most of the traveling and most of the speaking while Staten wrote and her writing were her writings were impeccable. According to a document by an unknown author, a great American and documents.com, she had health issues revolving her weight, which played a huge part in her being able to travel and speak out. She has one speech on record in Seneca Falls. <clears throat> Her communication skills were unclear since she did not do much of the speaking, but her books and writings, you can conclude that she was indeed a good communication skill. According to, according to teachingamericanhistory.com, her speech and address on women's rights Seneca, in Seneca Falls Convention, she held on July, July 19, 1848. On this day, she was able to persuade not only women, but men as well to be a part of the community, socially, economically, and politically revolving around women's civil rights. She didn't want the message to just be for females. She wanted to be for males as well. She wanted everyone to understand how significant it was for the country to include women in civil rights, especially for women to be involved politically. Now, in her speech, she used the methods ethos, logos, and pathos. Ethos convinces, convinces you to use the author's credibility and audience. Logo is to convince the audience logically. And pathos to convince the to persuade the audience using a, an emotional appeal. <clears throat> now, Elizabeth Cady Staten said, I should exceedingly deficient to appear before you at this time, having never spoken in public, were I not have the nerve by a sense of rights and duty, did I not feel the time had fully come for the question of women's wrongs to be the loud before the public? Did I not believe that women herself should do this work? Now, she wanted to persuade the audience and really bring them in by convincing them that women did indeed belong in that category of having rights as much as men. Now, in the speech, this, this, you know, gave the ethos aspect. Now, in her speech that included the pathos aspect, she says, let women, let women live as she should. Let her feel accountability to be maker. Let her to a high let her that her spirit is at to a high spirit as a man's and that her soul requires food as pure and exalted as his now at this point she got emotionally involved and she felt it in her heart that women should have women's civil rights and she wanted that to bring out to the crowd she wanted the crowd to feel what she was feeling now her ethics part of her speech she says but what would women gain by voting. Man must know the advantages of voting. That they seem very tenacious about the voting right. Think if you women had a vote in this government that all those laws affecting her interests would entirely vitiate her principle of right and justice. Now in this part of the speech she brings in a more ethics vibe to it because she's explaining 
what will women gain by voting? If we gain the right to voting, will we actually have a part of our government? Will we still be excluded, but just because we now officially have women's civil rights, that's not only that we want, we want it to be included, to be a part of, to have a say. Now, her legacy is all around. Women today have exceeded beyond measure in our society. According to Sean Kirst in the New York Times titled Election Times Clutch in Carraga Edge, Seneca Falls, Cradle of Women's Rights. This is the place this is the place Elizabeth Elizabeth Caddy Stein stood to spoke stood stood and spoke and to women and men to come here for a, for a woman's president added stitches to her emotional stage statue. I voted. Not only not only that, but she has a second part on book that she published in 1898 and 1899, 1898 named Woman's Bible. She states that the Bible in this teaching degrades women from sen sen Genesis to Revelation. Now, her legacy is definitely all around because women today have so many rights and we are, we own property, we own businesses, we are not just stay-at-home moms, we go to work, we go to school and we do not we do not limit ourselves. If we want to be a stay-at-home mother, it is okay. If we want to own a business, it's okay. If we want to do both, it's okay. But at this time, it is our choice. It is not a man's choice. Now, in today's society, unfortunately, Trump has, you know, degraded women in videos that leaked of him. Now, that really stirred up women around the country. And because of this, women still question if they have the rights that they deserve but I do believe that we definitely have exceeded and have gained more because of women like Elizabeth Cady Statton and she really paved the road for us and gave us that extra extra umph that we needed in order to get to where we are today well Thank you, everyone. I want to say thank you for listening to my speech and that you all have a great day.